Okay, so we uh, did the derivation of the binomial series. Let's go see what the radius of convergence of this thing is going to be. So we're going to take um, this general term and do a ratio test on it. So we pulled out these coefficients right here. We see a factorial involved. We're going to go do the ratio test on it to see what the radius of convergence will be. That is, for what interval uh, will we expect these guys right here to capture this function. So the radius of convergence for the binomial series, which is the 1 plus x to the k business we opened up, or we looked at in power series form. We're going to take a sub n and do a ratio test on it. So let's go plug things in. So here's a sub n plus 1. The confusing part usually is that you're replacing this guy with n plus 1 and this guy with n plus 1. k, remember, is just a constant, so don't touch k. n is your counter. Uh, so a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, I flipped it, multiplied by the reciprocal. So we simplify this, distribute the minus 1, and 1's cancel, 1 and negative 1, and we get k minus n. Strip out one of the n plus 1's pieces for your factorial. And one other thing I want to point out, this guy right here, don't let this be confusing. This is actually the term before k minus n because you're going down by 1. So if this is k minus n, the guy that was right before it must have been k minus n plus 1. It must have been 1 bigger than it. So this is actually the previous term prior to this guy when I put in the n plus 1. So now I have this goes away with that. All of this goes away with all of that, and I'm left with some constant minus n over n plus 1. So if this is not clear, we can just go ahead and find the limit by dividing by the highest power um, of n in the denominator, which in this case is n. We could do that if you don't see it right off the bat. And again, I conveniently have just realized that, wait a minute, I don't have x's because I have forgotten my x's. A <laughs> sub nth term had an x to the n that I ate up, but that's quick, so let me go fix and put it in there. All right, take two before I continue. So I have um, x to the n that I've completely eaten. That's x to the n plus 1 for the a sub n plus 1 term, and then x to the n for the a sub n term that flipped and came here. So I'm going to rewrite that as x to the n, x to the 1, and I still have this guy. So these guys will go away, and I will have an x to the 1 left there as well, which will be n dependent of n. So now I can analyze this guy and then see what the radius of converges, because otherwise I, I wouldn't have an x and I wouldn't even be able to find it. So now I have everything divided by n. So everybody divided by n, and we can see that that's going to be Looks like as n goes to infinity, this guy goes to 0. As n goes to infinity, this guy goes to 0. And I am going to be left with just an absolute value of negative 1, which is just 1. So all of this will go to 1. And I have absolute value of x times 1, which is just absolute value of x. And since I use the ratio test, I require this guy to be less than 1. For convergence. So it looks like the binomial series actually has a radius of convergence of 1, about 0. Um, it will not capture the entire function. It will only do so between negative 1 and 1 if I'm looking at it being centered at 0, which is what I was looking at here in this case. So unlike the sine and the cosine function, the radius of convergence through the ratio test is just 1. Um, which should kind of make sense because when we looked at this guy, our friend, which was this guy right here, our friend is really a special case of the binomial series. It's just with k equals negative 1. And we know from before that this only converges for absolute value of x less than 1, because this will, we trace that guy back to the geometric series. So since this is a special case of it, that too has a radius of convergence 1. So that makes us feel like, yeah, OK, that kind of makes sense. Now let's go look at some examples for various values of k on how we actually use the binomial series um, instead of going in 
by definition differentiating the function over and over to find the Maclaurin series or the Taylor series. Okay, so here's our binomial series um, expanded out. And we want to find the Maclaurin series for f of x equals 1 plus x to the third, uh, which we talked about before and we said if it's to the third and it's just a polynomial, then the series should not be finite. It should, it should not be infinite, but rather finite because a polynomial will capture itself. But let's go ahead for the sake of feeling okay about this whole business. Um, evaluate this, look at it again one more time, and then go look at functions where are, they're not necessarily polynomials. So k in this case is 3, just an integer, positive integer, which will just make it a polynomial. And I'm just going to follow this guy. k is 3, and in the next step for the second degree, I have two product, a product of two items, 3 and 2. I successively go one down by 1. In the third step, I have a product of three items starting at 3, 2, 1. In the fourth step, I have a product of four items, 3, 2, 1, 0. But 0 is just going to make everybody 0 from then on. So from the fourth degree on, every term will contain a 0, which will wipe everybody out. So it makes sense that this will only go up to the third degree because all I'm doing is expanding 1 plus x cubed. And so even if you did it using the actual definition, after the third derivative, the fourth derivative on would be 0 and wouldn't contribute anything here. So for this problem, we ended up with simplifying all of these, and we just ended up with 1 plus x cubed being this finite polynomial, again, because I started with a polynomial. This is basically just... 1 plus x times 1 plus x times 1 plus x. So if I multiply that out three times, I'm going to get this, and it's going to stop and not go on forever. So this was a special case where you could have applied maybe the binomial theorem or Pascal's triangle to find the coefficients of what the polynomials would be. And in fact, actually, Pascal's triangle, um, these are the numbers that come out of it each time if you look at it that way as well. So that's just for a, a boring case where k was equal to 3. Let's look at another one. Okay, here I can rewrite this guy as a binomial series, and my k will be negative 3 in this case. And I do know that this can be obtained by recycling our friend 1 over 1 minus x over and over and using differentiation, or I can just go ahead and plug things into the binomial series and see what it'll give me, and also realize that you can differentiate this over and over and over, so there will be no term that'll wipe out and go to 0. So my k in this case is negative 3. So I end up with k, and then remember k and k minus 1, which is actually negative 4. k, k minus 1, k minus 2, which is actually negative 5. Let's go simplify this a little bit. So multiplying these guys, negative 3 and negative 4, I get a positive, and then two negatives and um, uh, another negative, I guess I get negative. So it seems like I'm definitely getting an alternating series in this case. So simplify each one, and here is the expansion, about 0, of this function, um, the Maclaurin series for it. If, if we were to do the fourth one also, of course we would have a negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and a negative 6. Remember, whatever step or n counter you're at, that's how many products you'll have at the numerator. So for x to the fourth, you'll have negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and a negative 6 to multiply, and then divide by a 4 factorial, which will actually give you a fictitious x to the fourth, and then minus whatever guys come after it. So this is good enough that this guy, if you pull, put this into Wolfram Alpha, it'll probably spit this out, and then it'll have some higher orders there. Um, that's basically the expansion for it. We could go one step further and kind of guess what the closed form may be. Um, if you recognize the pattern, I have one, two, three, four, five integers. And I just realized here that uh, these numbers in absolute value look like they're the sum of the first n integers, because 1 plus 2 is 3, which is this guy. And then 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6, which is this guy. And then I have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, which is 10, which is this guy. And then to that, if I add another 5, I get 15. So if you notice that, this again is good enough 
If you notice that, we could put this in closed form and play around with our index a little bit to see what things may look like. So I'm guessing, and if you remember from what we discussed before, the sum of the first n integers, positive integers, is n, n plus 1 over 2. So I'm, I'm guessing this somehow version of it, would may, it may pop up here. So I know I have an x to the n, and I know I have a negative 1, probably to the n, if I'm starting it at 0, I'll, I'll try that and see if that works. And then I'm going to have some stuff that should give me the 1, 3, 6, 10, and 15. So I, if, I, if I guess something like n times n plus 1 over 2, I don't know if that's going to work or not. If it doesn't, I'll maybe adjust stuff. And this actually is just going a little bit further and, and putting it in closed form. So let's see if that'll work. If it doesn't, I may have to shift things up a little bit here. If n is 0, I get a 1 there. Actually, that won't work for sure if I start at n equals 0 because that'll give me a 0 and that'll wipe everything out and I don't have a 0 for the first term. So um, I can either start this at 1, but if I start that at 1, I'm going to have x to the 1, and it'll pick up maybe my first piece and not my second item and not the first piece. So let me play around with it and maybe do this. Again, different things we can do to see if we can pick up the pieces we need. So let me see if that'll work. If n is 0, I get a positive term here. This goes away, that goes away, I get 2 over 2. That's going to give me the 1 I need, and I get x to the 0, which is 1. So that gives me the first term, that's good news. If n is 1, I get a negative 1 to the 1, which will give me a negative term. Well, let's see if this guy will pick up what I need. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6, divided by 2 is 3, and n was 1, so I get x to the 1. So that's good news. If n is 2, one more I'll try. Negative 1 squared, that's going to give me a 6. 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 plus 2 is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And I was at the second step. So it looks like this is the closed form of this guy, if I want to write it in closed form. And you would probably get that too if you ended up using this and recycling the geometric series and differentiating it a couple of times to get here. So this is equivalent to this guy, and in closed form we can play around and put it like this. Okay, let's write the Maclaurin series for this guy, if we can trace it back to the geometric series, which I guess, or actually to the binomial series, which it looks like I could. I could rewrite that as uh, uh, to the one-half and then move it up and make it a negative one-half. So I'm going to end up with k equals negative a half that I'm starting off with. Now I'm going to go do my k, k minus 1, k minus 2, all that business. So I'll start off like that, knowing that I'm going to be using k equals negative a half and putting it in these guys, and then having an expanded version of this, um, a Maclaurin series, it'll be automatically about 0. Um, so let's go look at that. Okay, so I put in my k's, I get a bunch of these. Let's go simplify those and see what happens. It looks like I get factors of um, 2 in the denominator. So I get a negative term, and then I get a positive term, and then I get a negative term, and then this guy that I haven't put in will be positive. So if I multiply that out and divide by 2 factorial, multiply that out, divide by 2 factorial, I'm going to get something like this. So I got my coefficients, and this guy is apparently equal to something like this going on forever and ever. But I could quickly, I have very little time left in the video, but I could quickly maybe try to put this in closed form based on these patterns I see. So if you understood up to here, we're good. But I'm just going a little bit further. I'm, I'm, I rewrote these guys so that I have the 1 and the 3 and the 2 squared came downstairs. I have the 1, the 3, the 5 here, and then the 2, 2, 2, 2 cubed came downstairs with the factorials. Now I can maybe see a pattern that at the third step I have 3 odds multiplied, at the second step I have 2 odds multiplied, at the first step I only have the first odd, 
and then successive powers matching as well. So it looks like the first guy behaves differently. I'll leave that outside and the rest gets picked up by this product of odds upstairs and these guys in the denominator.